So this last week, um, Christina and I got to go celebrate our anniversary. That was pretty fun. As part of that, in true Fulkerson style, we went outlet shopping, um, <laughs> which is kind of how we roll. And um, the hot thing that was up there, like the big item that you could get a good deal on, um, was a new backpack, which was a little frustrating because I'm not going back to school anytime soon, as far as I know right now. Um, but it got me thinking. I love new backpacks. And I love New Year's uh, and going back to school because whatever happened in the previous year, whatever stuff, good or bad, and usually for me up until college, that was usually bad, uh, meant that was gone. Fresh start, new teacher, new supplies. Um, and I think as Christians, we should appreciate this time of year of, of new starts. Um, we understand the importance of a new start and of what grace and forgiveness does for us. Um, it gives us a fresh start. All that stuff from before is no longer held against us. And, um, and what happens when we don't get a fresh start is we, we keep carrying the load. Um, I don't think God intended us to carry the load any more than he intended me to keep preaching in this giant, <laughs> heavy container. But I want to share some of what I brought with me. Um, Some of the stuff that, that gets worked into the load. Um, got family. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I need to say more. Uh, yeah. I didn't have a stable home growing up, and there was divorce and transition, and things didn't go according to plan, and, and it should have. Uh, there's work. Believe it or not, uh, I love working with you all. John is not the easiest guy to work with at times. Um, and you all don't respond exactly how I want you to at times. And so uh, I could carry this around with me if I want. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. You know what? This is actually fitting. I can't even read it. <laughs> um, yeah. Senility. You know, that happens too. We've been carrying something so long, we don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> oh, finally figured it out. Those people. Oh. <laughs> Republicans, Democrats, race stuff going off in our country like like no tomorrow there's there's a lot of those people out there that we could blame for a lot of things and and we end up carrying that around um, and then there's the little things do you know when i came in this morning there was not enough coffee for the person to make coffee i think of about four people i want to blame for that right now and then i went to starbucks and had to buy fresh coffee and the guy started to grind my coffee and then, you wouldn't believe this, two other people got in line and he helped them before finishing grinding my coffee. Doesn't he know that I have a church service to be in? And instead of preparing the sermon and figuring out what that said on there, I was standing in line at Starbucks. Somebody needs to be held accountable for this kind of stuff. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. And my latte wasn't hot enough. And then at the bottom of all of that, uh, there's God, who I can blame for all of this other stuff having happened. Um, where was he when I needed to get to church and not be at Starbucks, or when my family went sideways, or when those people were causing havoc? Um, there's a lot of stuff we can carry around with us. Um, or there's an empty backpack. I can't imagine trying to preach with you all with holding all that stuff all the time and let alone go through it week after week year after year, life after life and so um, today I want to talk with you and, and it's about forgiveness but it brings me back to really what's at the core of the gospel which is um, John 10.10, 10. Jesus says I have come that you might have life have it to the full um, God is trying to free us up to be alive and um, we need a lot of help doing that and if there's one spot that we need help, 
It's understanding forgiveness and grace. It's, it's not how we normally function in this world. And if we miss it, the costs are so incredibly high. Um, I grew up, uh, when I was maybe eight or nine, my grandfather passed away, and my dad and his brother um, had disagreements about how things should be settled with my grandfather's estate. And um, they didn't speak for 10 years because they couldn't figure out a way to forgive one another for that disagreement. Um, right now, we are on the precipice of uh, our country in, in North Korea rattling nuclear weapons at each other. Um, and, I, and I just think, what would it look like if our world leaders had grace and mercy towards one another? What would that, how would that change things, let alone um, the racial violence, the, the hate groups? Um, when you see somebody hate, it does, it's not that they just decide to wake up one morning and decide to hate something. Um, there is something buried in the core there where they cannot let go. Some reason why this is. Maybe it's that they were underemployed and other people got the jobs or whatever it was, but it leads... This, this issue of carrying these rocks, of not being able to forgive, leads to division. It leads to the need to tear somebody else down, whether that be through um, side channels of gossip or whether it be directly through just, just hate. It leads to judging other groups. Um, it's so detrimental. And, and it wrecks our relationships as well. Um, our 16th anniversary, that's a lot of years. Um, imagine if Christina wasn't willing to forgive all of those things that I do <laughs> over and over. That's a lot of forgiveness, 16 years. Um, and back the other way, um, what would happen is our marriage would carry a heavier and heavier load until it just couldn't bear it anymore. Um, I've seen it happen time again. And um, there was another couple that was married right around the same time as us, and they couldn't figure out how to do this. They aren't celebrating anniversaries anymore. If we're honest, um, we all have our, our things that we carry, um, and they build up. And uh, I'm not a medical professional, but I can pretty much guess what they would say. Stress, it'll shorten your life, um, bitterness, resentment, all these things sort of build up um, and feuding. And um, it reminds me a little bit of this one spot our new house, um, there's this beautiful little maple tree right alongside the path, and um, it's right at the top of a ravine, and in the middle of that ravine is endless blackberry bushes, and those blackberry bushes like to crawl up, and when we first moved in, um, this Japanese maple was all wrapped up in blackberry bushes, so I cut them all back going, sweet, I saved the tree in time, it's going to be okay. I went out there the other day, you wouldn't guess. Actually, I already did. Okay. The blackberries keep coming back. Um, so this is not a one, one and done sort of deal. And so um, we're kind of getting towards the end of this series on parables, and um, we need to talk forgiveness before we can get done with it. So I'm going to read for you um, Matthew 18. Um, great, great parable, 21 through 35. And it's the, the parable of the unmerciful servant. And it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, uh, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? And Peter was pretty, like, stoked on himself at this. So, uh, religious tradition at the time, all the rabbis and how they commentated on Scripture, what they basically said was... Uh, you should forgive someone up to three times. After that, after that, you you have every right to hold it against them. I mean, three times is enough. And so Peter comes up and goes, Lord, I, I'm getting your messages on this idea of grace and forgiveness. What if I forgave like seven times? And I'm pretty sure he was expecting Jesus to be like, the teacher has, or the, the student has become the teacher. You have got it, Peter. Well done. How about I just stop talking and let you talk from now on? Because you have got this. 
And instead, here's what Jesus says to him. Um, he says, I tell you not seven times, but 77. Or some translations put it 70 times 7. Either way, if you're able to keep track 77 times that you have forgiven somebody, <laughs> something's a little off. <laughs> I don't think the forgiveness is really happening. Uh, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king. He wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began to settle, a man who owed him, as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. And the servant fell on his knees before him, said, Be patient with me, he begged. I'll pay back everything. And the servant's master took pity on him. And actually the word is he had compassion on him. We've been talking about compassion a lot. And he canceled the debt and he let him go. I'm going to stop right there because we need to let that one sink in a little bit. It's really tempting to just jump into the next part. But um, a talent, it was the largest um, financial currency that was tracked by the Romans. It was the equivalent of 20 years wages. So this guy owes a thousand times 20 years wages, an impossible debt. A, a talent was somewhere between 58 and 80 pounds of gold. It's a dire situation, and basically within Rome, there was a couple different ways to have your debts paid off. But one of them was what the master said he was going to do, which is um, it was bankruptcy, plus you're sold into slavery because you had value. And so did your family. Monetary value. So I'll cancel your debt, but you need to sell everything that you own and yourselves to whoever will pay for you. And then that will help pay off the debt. Um, it's not as bad as actually it got in Rome, which is pretty sad. But um, but there is an enormous debt here, and, and this number uh, is astronomical. Never able to be paid back. Impossible. Um, and that is our situation with God, with sin. Um, God created us good, intended us to live a certain way, to have a purpose. Um, that was good and to bring good into the world and um, I myself along with every other human being has been selfish and not lived the way God intended has um, failed to live up to what God wanted and instead has caused all sorts of wreckage um, that's just the reality of our situation and as a result um, we're separated from God, and that creates this division. This creates a debt that we could never, ever pay. And then um, Jesus has compassion. God has compassion. He sees our situation. He sees that even though this guy begs and goes, you know what, I will do whatever I can to pay you back. Trust me, I'll, I'll find a way to get the money. And the master knows, you're never going to get 200,000 years worth of wages piled up to pay me back. And so he says, you know what? You're desperate, and I'll have mercy on you. Mercy and forgiveness. God stops keeping score. Um, as far as the east is from the west, is how scripture describes it. Uh, it's not even in the same ballpark anymore. A, a clean state, a fresh start. No backstory, a new life. And that is incredibly good news. Um, and we skip over it and we say grace and we say forgiveness all the time in church, but sometimes it doesn't quite sink in. And it's crucial that it does for the rest of this parable. Um, we have been forgiven of much. And one of the ways to actually get in touch with this, um, it's an old Catholic practice, but it, it's come up on my radar um, again, and, and it's doing inventory at the end of the day. Part of that inventory is going, where did God show up? What do I need to confess that I haven't done well? Where did I fall short? Who do I need to confess that to? And um, where did God bless me surprisingly? Good? Bad? What happened today? Um, if we did that, my guess is at the end of every day we could find something. And it's so much that we can't keep track. And yet God says, I have mercy on you. Um, there's a saying, the air is human. And to forgive is divine. 
and thankfully both of those are incredibly true. Um, I prefer not to err, but it seems how I will. God's grace and forgiveness, mercy is new every morning, a fresh start, it's a gift. And why does he forgive? That one word popped up again, compassion. Compassion and compassion. Um, it is so hard for us when we look at the other, when we look at the person who we resent, to go, what is it like to be in their shoes? Mm. So hard. And yet, that is the start. To care deeply about someone who has hurt you is to go, what is it like for them? Uh, now, uh, so that's the good news. We're, we're incredibly forgiven people. More than we could ever hope and imagine. And here's why the parable gets a little harder on us, I think. Uh, 28 through 33. But when the servant went out from that meeting, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. That's a hundred days wages. Not a small amount, but not an unmanageable amount. Um, and he grabbed him, and he began to choke him, and he said, pay back whatever you owe me. And actually, uh, literally, it's, if you owe me something, pay me back. The guy didn't even know how much he was owed. But he grabs this guy and throttles him and goes, pay me back. And his fellow servant fell to his knees, and he begged him, be patient with me, I will pay you back. Literally the exact same words that he had said to the master. Um, but he refused, and instead he went and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay off the debt. And when the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and told the master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in and said, You wicked servant, I've canceled all this debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I've had mercy on you? Just as it pops up over and over in Scripture, we actually just prayed it. Forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts, as we have been forgiven. Um, over and over, this is taught this idea of God has acted towards you in love and grace. So, what do we do? We go out from this place and we extend that to the world. Um, and then Jesus says, 70 times 7, or 77 times. That, that involves strengthening a muscle. That involves repetition. And um, when we begin to forgive again and again and again, we begin to fall into the pattern that God made for us for how to live free and alive. Um, we strengthen a muscle. Uh, and we exercise that muscle again and again. And eventually it becomes second nature. Um, now, uh, as I got to 16 years of um, celebrating my marriage, I got to think back on the multiple times Christina and I have gone to counseling, and one of the greatest gifts we got from counseling was this idea that when you have a rough start, when you have a bad day, and I think this applies to any relationship, when you have a bad day, uh, one of the best things you can do is stop and go, can we start over? Can we have a do-over? When you have a do-over, that requires letting some stuff go that happened earlier in the day. But if you can do it, it means you get a fresh start. And the day can be completely different. When we decide, I'm going to give this person a new start, um, it's not an unawareness of what happened. It's not a let's do things differently. It's, it's a decision to go, I'm not going to let what happened dictate how the rest of the day is going to go. Um, it opens a door. Transformation can start to happen and the day can look differently. Um, the reality is God knows with us that even though we repeat the same stuff again and again, um, that by opening that door again and again, I forgive you. Let's have a new day. Let's try and make this day a little different. That transformation Towards something can occur. The same can happen in relationships. Um, I've told you a couple times that, that the, the person I've had the hardest time forgiving in my life was my stepmom. Really, really rough time between like 12 and 
16 with her. That um, was just brutal. We were brutal on each other, honestly. Um, and I had a really, really hard time forgiving her. And I ended up hating her all the way into college. Even though we didn't speak hardly at all, we didn't spend time together, I just had this resentment and bitterness. And um, my roommate uh, and I were talking about it, and I go, I gotta do something about this. And, and, and he goes, just, just start with God loves and forgives her. I said, well, how about just God forgives her? <laughs> Can't quite swallow that just yet. But that's what it started with. And then I exercised the muscle a little more and realized God forgives her. And then, well, why does God ever make the kids who love her? All right, maybe there's something redeemable about her. Um, this went on for weeks, months, struggling again and again. Um, but what it created at the end of it was I no longer had to carry around the baggage of hating my stepmom. Um, and it also opened a door where when we got to spend more time together again, um, when my father passed away, it was a really good time. She's a beautiful woman. There's some really, really good things about her. Um, and I missed out on a lot of them because I... Uh, it was too much carrying around the junk. Um, how do we know if um, forgiveness isn't happening? I think it happens in that, that verse 28 where he goes, pay back whatever you owe me. There's like a, it's, it's, it's a blind rage almost. It, it, you can't even identify what those things are. And um, if you owe me something, just, just pay me back. And uh, we start to like just have stuff. Now it's attached to the person. It's not even the thing that happened. My boss is always this way. Um, by the way, those words always and never, pretty devastating when it comes to grace and forgiveness. Um, it means I'm going to keep up everything that has gone on before with this person that looks similar to this, to all the stuff that's happening right now, and a whole bunch of stuff that will probably happen soon. And all of that is going to get put on the table as reasons why I can't let this person off the hook. Um, an eternity of past, future, and present debts heaped into a pile. And it, no wonder it's pretty hard to forgive at that point. That other servant's um, stuff, it was 100 days wages. There's, there's a lot there. And it might take a lot for us to get to a place where we forgive somebody. But it's doable. Um, this is not the, the thousand talents. Um, it doesn't mean we need to be besties with them. It doesn't mean that we forget what's happened and just keep recycling on it. Um, it's an awareness that we don't need to let that dictate where we go. Um, and then it says that this servant instead threw the guy in prison until he could pay back what he owes. Um, this is one of the worst things that can happen if you're in debt, by the way, uh, in ro the Roman world. You get thrown into prison where you cannot earn money until you pay back the debt. So unless somebody else comes and bails that person out, that is an eternity. Um, they are stuck. They will never pay back the debt, and out of just spite and vengeance, they're stuck in a prison. Um, and it was legal. Uh, do we put people into prison when we say, I, I can't forgive that? Mm -mm. You pay me what you owe me or else. You do what you need to do to set this thing right. Half the time that's even impossible. And then we say, no. Otherwise, I'm putting you in prison. Now, the crazy thing is my experience with my stepmom, um, those years where I hated her, she didn't seem that frustrated about it. She wasn't like waking up every morning and going, oh no, my stepson doesn't like me. <laughs> um, so the crazy thing about putting people in prison with unforgiveness is, um, yeah, we look through bars, but we're the ones in the prison. Um, we put ourselves there and we won't let ourselves out because we're carrying this thing around. Um, she was just fine. And it made me think, like, especially in light of current news, what does it look like 
to have strength? What does it look like to deal with wrongs in the world? Um, there's a couple different patterns. One is uh, the biblical pattern. It's, it's what our justice system is built on, actually. It's uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You can see it there. It's eye for eye, tooth for tooth, what's fair is fair. So if you cost me $100,000, I can sue you and get that $100,000 back. Now they won't award me $5 million unless I can figure out some other stuff like emotional damage to put that into. But uh, supposedly it's supposed to be fair. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, fair. That, that, that's, um, that's just. And then there's this other form of um, how do we deal with wrongs in, in Genesis 4, there's, there's a character who's, he's, he's an interesting dude. This is uh, after the fall of humanity, humanity's getting its start, um, Cain wanders, and then he has some kids, and in Genesis 4 we meet one of his kids, Lamech. Here's what he has to say. Uh, Lamech said to his wives, uh, Aden Zillah, listen to me. Wives of Lamech, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me. I have killed a young man for injuring me. And if Cain was avenged seven times, then I will be avenged 77 times. If you hit me, I will hit back even harder. Don't mess with me. Unlimited retaliation. And it gets bigger and bigger back and forth. Um, what Christ is saying here is so different. It is, what if it turns into unlimited forgiveness? And what's beautiful about grace and forgiveness is, it means I'm not going to let what you did to me hold me hostage any longer. I'm free to make a choice that is the best for both of us. I have all the options on the table. I have nothing against you. So now what is the healthiest thing? What is the blessing that I can give to you and to me both in this situation? Um, in the civil rights movement, speaking of hate and race tensions going on, civil rights movement, there were two um, main, main characters who, who really wanted to see that come about. There was Malcolm X. And Malcolm X was saying, we need to get power back. And it was retaliation for all the wrongs that have been done. Um, it was just. Um, and then there was Martin Luther King. And Martin Luther King was a Christian pastor who goes, what if we figure out how to love each other as a society? What if we seek God's best for each other? I have this dream of, of little black boys and little white boys being able to play on the same playground together and thrive. And it changes what was a zero-sum game. One person has to lose in order for another person to win. To What if we all win? And the way to do it is through grace and forgiveness and not retaliating. Things will be brought into light, and that transformation can actually happen. Our world is going to need to figure out how not to retaliate and how to have grace for us to move forward. Um, we need to figure this out if we're going to be able to face the wounds that we've been given through life. And frankly, it seems how we're all going to wound one another at one time or another. Um, I'm pretty sure that we had hoped that we would receive another shot, a chance to make it up, a chance to do it better the next time from one another. Um, that's our hope. That's how we move into a different place. So how do we get there? Um, honestly, this pattern, you've been forgiven a lot, so now how are you going to treat your other servant? That implies that we recognize that we've been forgiven. And I think the starting point is to actually soak in on the fact that you are loved. That's why we talk so much about God's love and, and His grace. Is when you can soak that in and go, man, despite all of me, despite all of this, God sees something incredibly valuable 
loves me anyway, and just pours it on again and again and again. How else could I not do that for someone else? Um, I want to finish this parable up. Um, how's the parable end? It says, um, Then the master called the servant and said, You wicked servant, I canceled all this debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I've had on you? And in anger, the master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Um, what this is talking about, that you'll be turned over in, to, the, to the jailers or to the tormentors. And what this was, was the third way that you could kind of get out of debt. And you could get turned over to a Roman jail where you would go and do something beneficial to the Roman government. And they would gradually pay you for each day that you worked a very minimal wage under regular torture and minimal food. Um, it was brutal. It was brutal. And one of the things that I don't think we always get um, is that God doesn't actually have to punish our sin. He's not looking to smite us. There's no need to, actually. We're quite good at smiting ourselves, and the way the world works does smiting enough. But if we refuse to extend grace, if we can't soak in God's grace and then extend it, um, we will be put into a very scarce, painful way to do life. Something will get taken from us, and we will be left kind of in a long-distance tormenting. Um, this isn't talking about our, our um, eternity, by the way. I just want to read a scripture for you. Um, Titus 3. Um, it's a good passage, by the way, if I can find it. All right. Of course, this is where my brain decides to skip a beat, and I can't remember where Titus is, so thanks for your patience, everybody. Uh, there we go, 827. It's right after all the Timothys, all the T's are together. Got it. All right. Um, it's worth the wait. Am I allowed to do that? Am I? I'm supposed to be an expert. Am I allowed to have a... <coughs> Thanks, so everybody. Just, I think it's just before Philemon, which is even more obscure. <laughs> <laughs> it's great mercy. <laughs> All right. Let me read this for us. Um, At one time, we were foolish, we were disobedient, we deceived, we were enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures, we lived with malice, envy, being hated, and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we've done, but because of his own mercy. He saved us through washing a rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Um, God's grace and mercy are always there. Um, but when we refuse forgiveness, to either receive it or to give it, um, we become exacting. Have you ever known somebody exacting with you? Where they like are keeping track you know when you did something wrong because it's going to come up later. They uh, are going to call you to accounts and it's going to be exacting. Um, I wonder if that person has received forgiveness and grace and understands it. I think that is the biggest loss that happens when we become exacting with one another. Is we actually have a hard time understanding this mercy that I just read about. We go, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't compute. Because my world is still set on unforgiveness. Um, it's a tormenting, it's a scarce living. Um, 
forgiving others is as much um, is much more a measure of whether or not we forget been receiving forgiveness from God than anything else. It, 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 it speaks to if we let God soak into us. So, so how do we get there? Um, how do we get there as people carrying around rocks to get to grace? Um, get in touch with forgiveness. We talked about that. Like have, a, have an account of the day. Watch where God shows you mercy. Um, the second thing is recognize that there's a better pattern out there. There's an option. The big gift of the Holy Spirit is you no longer have to live just according to your own will. God is there to help you, and if you ask for God's help, he can let you live a different pattern and say, God, help me to forgive. Help me to let this thing go. Help me to let this person off the hook because I need to be free. Um, and it has nothing to do with whether or not they make reparations. That's the funny thing is we sit there and we go, yeah, well, if they just... Then I could. And it has absolutely nothing to do with that. Uh, Christina and I went to this marriage conference put on by the Gottmans, and they are an interesting couple. They um, study love. They study thousands of couples and how they relate with one another. And, um, and they, they like quantify it. After studying thousands of people, here's what they argue about. Um, 69% of fights that go on in couples are the exact same thing for their entire marriage. I was like, shoot, I keep going to these things trying to learn how to like stop fighting about the same stuff. And then he drops this bomb on me. What? You mean, we can't even get this, some of this stuff worked out? 69% of it, I'll never get Christina to change? <laughs> And I'm pretty sure Christina was sitting there going, shoot, 69% of this stuff isn't even ever going to go away no matter what I do. <laughs> Forgiveness just got really, really important. Um, follow God's lead again and again, even if it's the same thing. Don't let it imprison you. Go, you know what? I've been forgiven a lot. I don't need to hold this against them. I might act differently in the future as a result, but I don't need to hold it against them. No. Last one, touched on it earlier. Um, strengthen the muscle. Forgive the stuff you can. That long line at the grocery store, good starting spot. Just, just forgive it. Let it go. Uh, the waitress who didn't bring out your coffee in time, that's another good spot. Uh, the driver who cuts you off in traffic. Um, there's this thing that I was reading about uh, this week that there's more like road rage than there ever has been before. There's this um, news story that brought it up where uh, this guy was running across a bridge. I don't know if you saw this. He's running across a bridge in England um, and, and there's this new phenomenon called rage running. People are so mad they go out for a run and as they run, they're so mad that they go out of their way to run into people. And he knocked this woman with his elbow, and she toppled, and her head went into the street, and a bus driver swerved, and the guy got arrested. Um, everyone was okay, but there was tons of room on the bridge. Video of it happening. Mm -hmm. Do we want to be people who are walking around with this low-grade oil, a whole bunch of stuff we've been carrying around, so that it just spills out randomly? at the people around us. Exercise the muscle. Forgive what we can in the big stuff. Forgive it again and again and again and again. And even when it doesn't work, keep working on that 49th time or 490th time until it goes. Um, be ruthless with unforgiveness in your life because it only hurts us. Fight back the blackberries. Don't let them kill the tree. Sound good? Let's pray. God, we need your help. Um, we are not patterned for this life of grace and mercy. We have learned um, to resent and to hold back mercy, especially when someone doesn't deserve it. And yet, we don't deserve your love and your grace and your mercy and your gift of life and your gift of your spirit and your gift of eternal life. 
and yet you give it to us despite the fact that we are making slow, slow improvements. We aren't living up to what you intend, and yet your mercy and your love never stops. So God, help us to have that with each other. Help us to have that towards those around us. Help us to live this stuff out so that the world can see what your kingdom looks like and what it looks like to know you.